I started my business in a so-called recession, okay? And I'll be perfectly honest with you, call me thick or call me whatever you want, <laughs> I didn't know what a recession was and I didn't care less because I had made my mind up that one Monday morning I was going to start working for myself. Some people are frightened of entering into business on their own because they're concerned about how am I going to pay tax? How do I deal with PAYE? How do I get a VAT number? Trust me, these are easy things. HMRC are very, very helpful. You can go into your local office. They will tell you exactly what you need to do. There's a wave of, of so-called en enterprising entrepreneurs out there that, that feel that they can come in to business at this kind of level, you know, they, they, they feel that, that, that Richard Branson, you know, he just woke up one morning and started an airline. Uh, you know, he didn't, you know, he was like me. He worked out of a little shop somewhere and he built his empire up and he learnt all his, uh, all that he learnt through things going wrong and things going right. You need to set aside a day per week where you divorce yourself from the day to day activity of your company. You must have someone inside the company who you trust. God forbid you ever got run over by a number six bus. Think of that person who would have to take control and put that person in control for that day or for those two days and then use those two days to go out into the marketplace to find yourself some new business or at least observe what your competitors are getting up to and what they're doing in order to see how the market is changing. Because if you engross yourself too much in the day-to-day -day running of the business, you might find that the world is passing you by and you're missing opportunities. You know, some people say, oh, he's not my style of business. I don't do business this way, I don't do business that way. Well, look, it's true. Not everybody does business my way. And, and I'm not the greatest businessman in the world. I've got my way. Other people have got their ways. It's as simple as that. Do I think that the, the, the CEO of Tesco's learns anything from it? No. Uh, obviously not. In fact, people like that tend to say, oh, what a lot of rubbish, you know, I wouldn't do this and I wouldn't. Of course they bloody wouldn't. That's why they're the CEOs of Tesco's. Um, I started my business um, in so-called recessionary times of 1967, where the thought of going to a bank and asking them for some money to finance you uh, was just off the radar. In fact, the thought of even going to my rich uncle to ask him for any money was off the radar also. So it was really, whatever I had in my own savings, I went out and, and, and started to buy merchandise and sell merchandise. And honestly, honestly, I'll look you in the eye and tell you that all my money came from organic growth, without any loans whatsoever. And it wasn't until, I would say, um, um, the late 70s, that I had a business of such size that required me to open things like letters of credit uh, that I needed to actually ask the bank and say, what is this letter of credit nonsense? What's this all about? Because these Japanese people, component people, are asking for this letter of credit. And I soon found out that a letter of credit, as far as they were concerned, was no different than cash. Uh, they see it as a commitment that they make to an overseas supplier to guarantee them payment and the last thing as they explained to me so eloquently is the last thing we want is a container load of nuts and bolts uh, if you don't pay for them so therefore the minute you open the letter of credit it is no different as you just taken that amount of money from the bank. I do what I want in that boardroom and if they don't like it they can it off. It's as simple as that. And the best bit of advice I ever got to give that I gave to them was that <coughs> Um, no matter how small your business is, or indeed even how large it is, I think my success was always being realistic and regular personal health checks. I don't mean, I don't mean on me, but on the business. Whether that was started out weekly or monthly or whatever, but in the course of a week, I mean, I know that sounds, sounds pathetic, but when I started my business in 68, I set myself targets to make £60 a week. Now, trust me when I tell you that is equivalent to something like £3,000 a week now. Sounds a bit pathetic. And that was the targets. And I would look week, week on week and say why I didn't do that or why I did do it. And it's why I didn't do it, uh, you know, taught me what not to do anymore. 
and not to waste my time talking to certain people, not to waste my time in certain products. And when I did exceed it, it was what did I do to exceed it is where I learned what to do more. Regular checks on yourself, um, be it weekly or monthly, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, larger companies will say that's the, that, that's the, pur that's the purpose of monthly management accounts, yeah? I think it does bother me a lot in the use of this word entrepreneur, and that is when people use it as referring to themselves. It is a word, I believe, that is, is designed for someone else to use it in observance of someone else's achievements. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and it's one that gets used uh, too freely, in, 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 in my opinion. And, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I would just say that, um, you know, aspiring to be an entrepreneur or a, be a business person is, 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 uh, is better terminology as, as far as I'm concerned. Um. A successful business person needs to exploit the market of the sector that they are in. They need to have a great understanding of it. They need to constantly monitor the marketplace and spot opportunities. That's what successful business is all about. Spotting new opportunities and exploiting them. Most success stories in expansion of businesses are based upon enhancements learnt from the core business that you're already in. Adding additional features to products, expanding product ranges, ideas that come from what you're already doing. Particularly in manufacturing, your own employees can actually come up with some spark of genius in streamlining the production process, something that you may have never thought about before, something that could save you lots and lots of money, or suddenly come up with an idea based upon the product that you're producing that is allied to it. And it was tough out there, uh, and, and it's as simple as that. And I, the reason I started my own business was because I attained some qualification in the business that I was in. I didn't leap out of bed one Monday morning saying, I want to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to start a business. Yeah. I had to attain some, quali so, some expertise in some subject. And it was ha actually in wholesaling electrical goods. And what prompted me was that after spending two or three years working for someone else and not being patted on the back, um, I said, well, I can do what I'm doing for him myself, OK? But I didn't invent that one Monday morning because on the Monday afternoon when I had to go out and start selling the stuff, I had to know what I was doing. I didn't just get a pin and stick it in the FT and say, I'm going to go into that sector. And this is the biggest problem that I come up against with young people. The biggest, biggest problem is getting them to understand that you don't just fancy being in business. You, 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 there has to be some idea, something that you are expert in, something that you've attained some expertise in before you can even consider it. It sounds very, you know, nice and cool. I'm starting my own business, but it's not cool. Believe me, it's tough. Very, very tough. And, um, you know, and that's why that quest this question is always very difficult to ans answer, mm. because if the person would have said to me, I've spent three years working in um, some chemical company, and I've seen the way they do it, and quite frankly, I feel now going off and doing it myself, uh, do you think the time is right now? I could answer him. Mm. Um, you know, I'd ask who the customers would be, the potential customers, what the market is doing in chemicals. Mm. But I can't just answer a blanket question like that until I know specifically what, what, what industry you're talking about. Yeah. Well, that was property, so... Well, the, the property market at the moment, I mean, I, I, my answer to him is, have you got any money? <laughs> because if, you, if you've got... Because you're going to need it. If you've got any money, then yes.